Okay, sorry about that. I just needed to set up the recording. All right, again, welcome everyone. If you're not already muted, please mute yourselves. There will be time for Q&A at the end. Um, I'm very excited to be introducing some interesting technology that you can leverage today on your businesses, um, 3D modeling and AR. If you aren't familiar with the IFDA, what we are is a nonprofit organization here to support to the trade furnishings industry. We support education, career advancement and business. So um, after shutdown, we've been here broadcasting digitally, bringing information to help you continue scaling your business and not feel so alone in the world, knowing that there are opportunities. Um, if you haven't already joined the IFDA, please consider joining us. We are a diverse group of people throughout the trade, not just designers. We have construction, um, stagers, all sorts of people in real estate. It's a wonderful group of people with a lot of input. So if you don't know something, you can always reach out and find somebody to support you in your endeavors. Um, and with that, I'd love to also introduce you to our sponsors who support our organization and the industry as well. Without them, we wouldn't be anywhere. Um, the Shade Store, Hunter Douglas, Benjamin Moore, Kravit, Stacey Garcia, Siegermans, 200 Lexington, American Hardware, Fisher & Paykel, 41 Madison, Hoffley America, New York Now, and Toto. I'm happy to introduce to you CG Trader. It's a technology company out of Lithuania here to talk to us about how 3D modeling and augmented reality can help you scale your business online. Dahlia is the CEO. She's going to walk us through some of the um, uses, use cases of 3D and AR technology online retail, and also tell us how we can get started. Dahlia, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Garrett. Thank you for, for the introduction and thank you for having us. We are very excited to be here. So I'll share my screen so that you, you guys can see the presentation. Just give me a second. All right, so I believe everyone can see my screen. So yes, very excited to be here. And um, as, as Gareth mentioned, I'm a co-founder and CEO of CG Trader. And uh, today we'll speak about uh, increasing your online sales with 3D and augmented reality. So on the agenda, we have several topics. Before we start, I will briefly tell you about CG Trader and you know who we are and why are we talking about 3D and augmented reality. And then we'll go over a few trends and use cases, uh, as well as some data points about uh, 3D and augmented reality in, in online retail. We will then go into three case studies, very interesting case studies from brands uh, in, in, in fashion and in furniture on how 3D can increase online sales. And then we'll briefly cover how you can get started if this is something that you would like to do. So as Gareth mentioned, please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, I think uh, uh, the plan is to answer them at the end of the session. So, so let's, let's get started. Uh, first of all, about CG Trader briefly. So we are the world's leading provider of 3D models. More than 150 Fortune 500 companies use our services and we have more than 10 years of experience in 3D. With this 10 years of experience, we have built a massive community of 3D designers. So more than 3 million 3D designers use CG Trader and uh, source models there. And then uh, we saw that there is a big need for 3D models, so 3D modeling solutions for e-commerce and online retail. And we have built a scalable 3D visualization system that we call CG Trader Arsenal. Now, uh, I'm joining today from Lithuania. We also have a, a small office in New York, so quite close to you guys. But um, some of our customers include, uh, uh, generally we, we work with some of the top retailers, but they don't always want to be public about it. Nevertheless, some names I can mention are Google, Made.com, Crate & Barrel, Rebecca Minkoff, Shopify, and others. So that's a quick intro about what we do. and. Um, Let's go directly into, into the trends and uses of 3D and augmented reality in online retail. As I'm sure you, everyone knows, right? Uh, when you are selling online, it's very important to have compelling visuals, right? 
So uh, we found some research from Salsify that tells that this, this year, consumers expect up to eight images per product and up to five videos per product. So when I saw this, I thought, uh, you know, uh, five videos, I mean, okay, maybe eight images, I can believe that, but five videos, who has five videos per product? But if you really look at it, if you go and browse on Amazon, you can see that uh, some of them have six, seven videos of the same product. And it can be, you know, a 360 video film from all, all types of, uh, from all angles, a product review, a testimonial, an instruction or something else. So in fact, this is actually a massive change. The, um, just uh, four years ago, the same groups expected up to three images per product, and there was no expectation to have videos at all. So, you know, I think that uh, we all agree that compelling visuals are very important, but of course the challenge is that they are expensive to create. If you, try, if you are doing a professional photo shoot, it can easily cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars. And uh, not only that, it requires that you actually manufacture the product itself. You ship the product to the destination uh, where there's a photo studio. You, you do the photo shoot, uh, hire a photographer and make the, the whole uh, physical photo shoot. And then uh, even from sustainability standpoint, very often these products are just discarded and, uh, and, and not even sold. So, if you are selling the same uh, product in different color variations, it's even more challenging. You actually have to manufacture each of these products and then you know, do this whole process all over again. So here, I think uh, 3D model production is really a very, very compelling alternative. If you are uh, creating a 3D model, it costs around 30, from 30 to $200 per model. That's a rough cost depending on the complexity. And that can be done completely virtually with no physical interaction. So, um, you know, especially at the time of a global pandemic, this is, a, you know, it's, a, it's an additional benefit that you don't really need to move the product and, and uh, make sure it reaches the destination. Now, if you have different colors, it's actually very simple to do with 3D. And uh, if you want to adjust the geometry a little bit, it's also quite quite simple. So it's definitely a very compelling alternative instead of photography. Now, what you can do with 3D, uh, there are several things. First, you can create still images of the product in a process that it's called 3D rendering. So this chair is actually a 3D, 3D model and it's rendered you know, as a high resolution still image for use in e-commerce. Now you can generate as many images as you like. You can generate the images from all different angles of the product. And then you can also do different close-ups, detail shots and so on. So it's actually, uh, if you think about these uh, eight images in the beginning of the presentation, this is a, a really great way of doing that and making sure that the customer has confidence to buy when they look at the, at the product online. Now, uh, another very, very uh, attractive uh, attribute of 3D virtual scenes and generate images like that. These images, they are called the lifestyle scenes and they show your product in the environment that it's uh, perhaps expected or aspirational uh, uh, where, where it's expected to be used. So if you think about what kind of operation it would be to actually uh, do this type of image in, in real world, basically renting the flat, furnishing the flat, moving the product there, doing the photo shoot there, it's, you know, it's easily thousands of dollars per image. Now uh, with 3D, you can just choose a virtual scene where you place the product uh, that, that you're selling and you can generate different images and different angles as well. And if you're selling, let's say this office chair, you can also place it in this environment, but you can also choose another scene and place the same scene, uh, the same chair in uh, you know, an industrial loft or an uh, you know, Christmas themed uh, uh, environment so that you have visuals for whatever promotion you are running. So if you look at these 3D models, typically it's very, very hard to tell the difference. 
I ask many times uh, you know, people to, to guess which one is the real one and which is the 3D model. Very often they tell that uh, they tell incorrectly because the 3D model actually looks even better than the real one. So in this case, on the right, you have a 3D, 3D render of a 3D model. And on the left, you have a photo. And your only clue is that perhaps the 3D model is even, you know, uh, looks even better than, than, than the actual prod. So this is the uh, 3D rendering side. And then you can also use 3D models for interactive applications and augmented reality. Now, augmented reality helps, uh, allows anyone with a mobile phone, a tablet, or, an, or any similar device to superimpose the product directly in their environment. If you look at uh, how it really works, it, it allows the customer to visualize your product directly in their home space. And this builds an emotional attachment to the brand. It also helps them understand if the sofa will fit in their living room and uh, saves a lot of money for the retailer uh, in, 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 in reducing product returns. Finally, these uh, products, they can be turned around, looked from different directions. So I can show you how it actually looks when, uh, when a customer is interacting with the product. Now this technology is already native in uh, all, all, in most of uh, iPhones and Android phones. So if you have a 3D model, you can place it directly on your website, and this is this will be enabled by uh, you know th there is no need for any kind of application download or anything like that. So this is the augmented reality side, but you can also have this interactive experience on the web. Now, if you place a 3D model on the web, the customers can look at, uh, uh, using a 3D viewer, they can look at 3D model at your product from all different angles and inspect it in, in all different ways. Some of our customers like to show the capabilities of their products, uh, which you see on the, on the left. So there they actually have an animation, animated version of 3D model. And then you can immediately see you know how it how it works in action. So, to to sum up the main use cases of 3D in in online retail, on one hand you have 3D rendering, which helps you produce still images, high definition still images that you can use in your website, print catalogs wherever you want, and that reduces your uh, product visualization costs by up to ten times. And of course, it gives you such a, a immense flexibility in product visualization so that you can actually do whatever you like and uh, place the product in different rooms, scenes, and so on. On the other side, you have interactive product visualization with 3D and AR, which is a new way to engage the customer. We have seen, and you will see from the case studies, that uh, this experience, trying it out in your, in your room, in your physical environment, can reduce returns by up to five times. And uh, on the other hand, it also increases the confidence to buy, and therefore it can increase sales conversion by up to 60%. So very exciting developments, and uh, let's look at how some of the retailers are already using it. First case study we wanted to share with you is Rebecca Minkoff. Rebecca Minkoff is a high-end fashion designer. I'm sure many of you are familiar with, with their work. Uh, they, uh, they noticed that when they were selling their products online, the, their customer service representatives were mostly getting questions, you know, how does this actually look? How does it feel? How big is it? How, you know, how spacious the handbag is and so on. So they thought, you know, uh, in general, the more uh, kind of, visual aids and the more help you give for the customer to evaluate the product, the, the better. And they have a lot of very innovative um, uh, experiences on the website. And they decided to try 3D and augmented reality as well. So they selected 50 handbags and uh, we uh, created these, these models for them. And uh, they placed these handbags, these 3D models of the handbags on their website. 
what happened is that the customers were able to uh, look on, on the website and look at the handbags from all different angles, rotate them and so on. And they could also place them in augmented reality directly in their environment, let's say on their table. So that gives you know a real world scale and they understand how big is this actually, the, the, how big is the, is the bag and uh, if the, you know, the laptop will fit in or the iPhone will fit in. So they, what they found from the data is that customers who engage with augmented reality were 65% more likely to place an order and 44% more likely to add an item to the cart. Now, if you think about the e-commerce, typically you are battling for, you know, a couple of percentage points increase. So this, these are actually really huge numbers. And, uh, you know, this is a very, very encouraging data. Now, uh, another uh, uh, case study from uh, uh, another of our customers is uh, CB2, which is a, a sister brand of uh, Crate and Barrel. So uh, CB2 is kind of a edgy, cool, modern brand, and they are trying to convey how their products are looking in, their, in, in, in the environment. It's very important for them because the products are large, you know, it's furniture. It's, uh, if you, it, it, the, the customer needs to be confident that it will fit in, in their environment and it will look compelling from the aesthetic point of view. So what they did is uh, we created 3D models and placed them in augmented reality and uh, 3D viewer on their website. And they found that um, if you look at the people who looked at their, the products, not only those who, who used augmented reality, but all visitors, they found 21% increase in uh, revenue per visit and 13% lift in average order size. Again, very, you know, very, very uh, uh, compelling numbers. Now, another um, story that I would like to highlight is Wayfair. Uh, Wayfair has been a pioneer in, uh, in 3D for some time. And actually this year at the National Retail Federation show in the beginning of the year, they shared their experience of working with 3D. So the way they work with 3D is they have, uh, they create 3D models of their products and then they have these 3D environments where they can place their products. And on top of that, they uh, generate variations and uh, product variations, product colors and so on. And combining that gives them, you know, the visuals, the photos that uh, you see on their website, but also next generation experience like augmented reality. So what they said is that um, the cost saving uh, compared to traditional photography is around 10 times. And um, even when you use 3D to produce still images, so not interactive, not augmented reality, but still images, uh, the, the conversion uh, increase for these products is around 20 to 30%. That's because you can build uh, you know, more images and have a richer visual visuals for these products. Now, if you look at customers who looked at uh, uh, their products in augmented reality using their view in AR app, uh, they have reported three times increase of conversion rate and two times higher add to cart rate. These are, you know, these are huge numbers. It's a very interesting proposition for anyone who wants to increase their sales in, on the online store. So if you have a business or if you sell products that you know, could benefit from that type of uh, uh, technology, of course, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind is uh, how does it actually work? So how, how do I get started? And uh, some of the companies that we work with have hundreds or thousands of products and then it's, you know, it's even more complicated. So, you, you think, how will I convert all my catalog into 3D? How can I make it happen? And uh, with, with, these, uh, with these concerns in mind, we uh, started CG Trader Arsenal to address exactly these issues. So the way it works with CG Trader Arsenal is that uh, the customer sends us basic product images. It can be mobile phone images, you know, very simple images. 
uh, the, the to make sure that the image shows you know what the product actually is but it doesn't need to be studio quality some customers just send us uh, the links that the of the products that they already have on the website and the dimensions so dimensions are of course important so that you know we can understand how big how wide and how large the product is this information is then loaded into a CG Trader arsenal and distributed to designers who work on creating these 3D models. Once they are created, the uh, models are uh, provided for customers review. And uh, once the model is finalized, the, uh, the, you, you can choose whichever solution you are looking for. So it can be augmented reality, it can be still images, lifestyle scenes, or anything, you know, what's, what's relevant for you. What's very important is that, um, you know, 3D generally is quite complicated from a technical standpoint. So you, for using CG Trader Arsenal, you don't need any technical knowledge. That's, uh, you know, it's, uh, we do all the heavy lifting to make sure that the customer doesn't need to deal, to deal with that. And the way the process goes is that um, the models are created then we reviewed them from technical and aesthetic standpoint to make sure that they meet the customer's requirements. And once they are verified, they are provided to the customer for review. So it looks like this. This is on the left. You see the reference image that the customer provided. And this is the created model rendered in 3D. So all the customer needs to do is basically look at it and you know if there is some discrepancy, let's say the zipper should be darker, they just mark it directly on the model and, uh, and that's it. The designer then fixes them. So you don't need to actually you know, have some technical calls, uh, screenshots, uh, spreadsheets and things like that. And uh, then once it's done, the models are delivered through CG Trader Arsenal. So once you have the model, you can select what are you planning to use it for. So let's say in this case is a 3D viewer and you, you can select the colors, the um, you know, different parameters, like do you want it to rotate automatically or do you just want to keep it for the customer to interact with. And uh, once that done, that's done, you are getting a code that you can place in your, in your e-commerce website and then that's it. So that's actually very, very, simple for someone who doesn't even, doesn't have any technical knowledge or any 3D knowledge to work with these 3D models. So that's um, uh, you know a quick overview and of course for for we, we want for you to try this uh, the solution and to try using 3D in your business so we prepared an introductory offer for you guys. So you know just by messaging me you can get three 3D models for free and uh, CG Trader Arsenal growth plan for three months also for free. So that's, you know, even, I mean, if you, if you have some questions or concerns about the technology, this is a great opportunity for you to try it out and, uh, and you know, see the impact firsthand. So I think this is, this is it from our side. Thank you very much for, for listening and thank you for joining and uh, we will now open the floor for Q and A, right? Uh, get it? Yes. Thank you so much for that. That is so so exciting that this is so accessible um, and it looks so profoundly sophisticated that it really is a value add to any of our community that is building an online store. And it wasn't too long ago that David Santiago interviewed um, uh, Bear, uh, Baron. Um, Somebody tell me, now I'm blanking on her name, but she had announced that she is going full augmented reality on her website with her product assortment. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely something that's accessible and something that a lot of people are moving towards. So I wanted to open the floor to questions. And of course, if you want to elaborate um, on the questions that are here in the chat, go ahead. I'm going to start reading those to you, Dahlia. And um, you can also raise your hand too if you have if you want to you know speak and ask some more elaborate questions. Um, I did have a few questions that I just wanted to clarify for our community that I think that they'll be curious to know. 
Um, one of them is interestingly, this technology seems like you could conceptualize product assortment, put it on your website and test it without actually investing in manufacturing. Is that right, Dahlia? Yes, exactly. And some people do that. I, I know, for, for example, we have, uh, there is a luxury watch company and uh, well, maybe not super luxury, but mid, mid, uh, mid level uh, watch company and they do it for all their products. So they launch it, they launch it, you know, in, in uh, social media, on their store and so on, and they launch a pre-order. And that's how they visualize the products. And then, you know, if there is a demand, then they actually manufacture them. Awesome. That's, I think that's an amazing thing. I would love to test and scale some of the ideas. And, and back to my original statement about, it was Robin Barron. I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous up here and blanked around the name. Robin Barron, who is one of our amazing members and brilliant designers she is moving into the augmented reality space. And um, so this is, this is really great that, to know that this is accessible. Um, so we'll go into some questions here. One question from um, is, uh, could this technology work in kiosk and in stores? Yes, so actually this is how some of our customers use it. So there are different solutions. One is you have a tablet with, um, with the, uh, all different options that you carry. Because let's say you are selling you know, in, on, um, in, 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 in a store and you know, the real estate is very expensive. So you actually can't place the, all your full assortment. Maybe you, you, we had a case study from Fatboy who are selling bean bags, right? So you won't, won't put you know, uh, 20 different bean bags if you have just you know, a limited amount of space. But what, uh, what, what you can do is actually Play, have a tablet and have different uh, versions available in store. And then we also found that some customers use it with print catalogs. So they have a print catalog uh, with uh, product visualizations. And then they have a QR code where the customer can uh, just point their mobile phone into the QR code and see the product in augmented reality in full scale. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, Sue Hilty asked, what is a 3D viewer to that point about um, QR codes and viewing through your phone? Yeah, so 3D viewer is basically something like uh, what, what you see here. So it's kind of a technical term of uh, placing the model on the web. So it's uh, basically a 3D viewer allows to um, the customer to rotate the product in, in, in different uh, dimensions and so on. So you can turn it around and so on. This is, uh, it's basically like you embed a YouTube video in your website, it's the same. You can embed a 3D viewer. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, back to your point about that catalog, you can literally aim your phone at the product if you're enabling this and the, the product will pop out of the magazine and you can kind of move it around and look around it. It's such an interesting way to interact. Um, Kat Yeager asks, I'm curious to learn how things have changed during the last seven months of COVID and what's happening globally in different markets. Um, I think uh, maybe, can you talk to that a little bit as far as like how you've been doing business and who you've been working for? Yeah, yeah. So of course, you know, for us, um, I mean, many people are, lo uh, are looking for solutions like ours. When the pandem pandemic first started, what we saw is that there was kind of a pause from our customers and thinking, you know, how is it? How, what's, how, what's going on? And then they started ordering even more because they realized that, you know, now e-commerce e is your main way of reaching the customer. I mean, it's like uh, many stores closed. It's more difficult to actually, uh, you know, get someone uh, visit your retail location. So definitely even more customers are moving. And we had one customer who had a logistics problem where they couldn't actually move, ship the products to a photo studio. Because you know, the supply chains, they are extremely um, global these days. And so they couldn't ship the, the products to the, for a photo shoot. So they did the, it virtually instead. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, super interesting. Uh, Mark Rosenhaus asks, how do you know what the bottom of the shoe looks like without a photo? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we need, uh, we need, of course, the photo of the, um, uh, wherever there is some information. So if you want us to, 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 to create the bottom of the shoe, of course, we, want, we need to, uh, the photo of a bottom of a shoe. In some cases, we have had situations where 
the customers don't want to show the bottom of the products in some cases. So there is a possibility to actually limit the, uh, uh, the, the, the angles that the customer can turn the product. So let's say maybe they can't turn you know, the cupboard, uh, they can't see the bottom of the cupboard in, in their experience or something similar. But generally, yes, we need the, the um, photos that show how the product looks like. But it doesn't need to be 20, it can be you know, two, three, four. Fantastic. And Kat Yeager asks, what services do you offer? What do we, your customers, do to create the images? You mentioned we did this for Rebecca Minkoff. Yeah. Um, what do you require from us if we wanted to start working with you to get these products up online? Yeah, so what, what we need is uh, the reference images. So it can be, as I mentioned, one, two, three images per product. It, if you're already selling that product, you can just send us the link to the e-commerce listing. So there we can actually get the images from there uh, directly. And then uh, we need the dimensions. So these are the inputs for creating the 3D models. And then once they, once they are created, we, uh, we provide the access to the system so the customer can confirm if they match uh, the, the, the real ones. Of course, in most cases, there are not you know, very few adjustments, but uh, sometimes the then the customer needs to still have a look and make sure that it's correct. And then that's it. So you, you have the access to the, uh, to the technology that you can place on the website. So on the website, it depends on which website you work with. It could be, uh, you know, for in some cases you just publish a 3D model. In other cases, you embed it like a YouTube video with the code, or you get the still images that you place on your website, just like, you know, any still images. Uh, that's awesome. Um, and Kat Yeager asks, can the client choose the lifestyle scene and how do we work with your firm? Yes, yeah, so we have a large marketplace of different scenes. So typically when we speak with the client, we get, uh, we, um, you know, get a feel what they're looking for and we provide a few options to choose from or they can, you know, they can send us a few images what they are looking for. And then, if the uh, if the market if the um, lifestyle scene is already available, then it's actually quite cost efficient. If uh, the customer insists, we can of course create a custom lifestyle scene and place the product there. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things about this is that you can use that three D model and drop it into any lifestyle scene. I know on my own website, it's been very important to me to be able to. Um, kind of paste my own artwork into new scenes to show the versatility of how those products can work in different types of spaces. So that's yeah. an amazing thing. You don't have to stage every single time in photo shoot, especially in these complicated times. Um, Kat Yeager also asks, um, where are the images hosted? And on the client's web, or where are the images hosted? Are they on the client's website or on your cloud or where does it link to? So if you are looking for the renderings, like still images, they are on the client's uh, website. So you just download these images from CG Trader Arsenal and place them to wherever you host your e-commerce store. If you are looking at these experiences like 3D and augmented reality, they are hosted on uh, CG Trader Arsenal. And it's, it's similar to YouTube. You can just place the code directly on your e-commerce store and you get like a similar um, you know, embedded 3D viewer and, and that's it. You're enabled with augmented reality and 3D. That's awesome. And to that point too, um, if any of you use Shopify or are considering using Shopify, it's also enabled um, for 3D modeling and animations now. So that's another easy way to start a web store of your own without necessarily designing a whole new website or investing in that. You can really focus on your own storefront. Rose Hitmeyer asks, are the files exported to a 3D program like Revit and AutoCAD for designers to use in their room designs to sell the products? Yeah, so the files are uh, exportable. They are exportable in uh, OBJ, 3ds Max uh, formats. Uh, we also, uh, you can also export in an uh, FBX and also the new formats that are for the web, USDZ and GLB. Um, Revit, um, we don't support Revit at, at this point because 
these um, models, they are basically optimized to look very good. They are not uh, optimized to be to function, you know, from from a engineering standpoint or a manufacturing standpoint. But um, uh, so, it, I mean, potentially you could convert to Revit, but we don't support right now uh, the, the, these models in Revit. But as a customer, you own the model, so you know you, you can do whatever you like, even with the source files. That's awesome. So I could drop it into my own Photoshop file and start illustrating however I want to and playing with yes. the ideas. Fantastic. Yes. Another question is, can your designers create illustrated lifestyle scenes custom to the brand conceptual art? Yes, so we do it sometimes for some customers. So for sure, we can, uh, you know, we need to learn more about, uh, about the brief, but uh, yes, we do it for some. And then Kat Yeager wants to clarify, so the client owns the image that you create. So do the clients own the images that you create? Yes, the model, the image, and uh, this uh, uh, 3D viewer is hosted on our site, but the uh, IP is owned by the customer. Fantastic. And so then like how long would it take to get started with you? Like say I have five conceptual products that I would like to test out there that I don't even want to manufacture. I just want to see if there's customers interested mm -hmm. in it. Um, how long would it take to work with you to get those products online and start selling? Yeah, so it depends very much on the complexity of the product. So you saw the chair with fur. Fur is very complex in 3D, so that takes you know a bit more time. But generally, our system uh, works in that way that uh, since it's very scalable, even if you you know give us hundred or a thousand models, we can do it at the same time as we would do one or two models. So depend, the, the delivery of five models would depend, can be you know, in uh, several days, the first models would reach you up to several weeks. So um, it, it really depends from the complexity. Awesome. And then Mark Rosenhaus asks, is there any legal issues we should know about? Well, uh, so you, you are selling your own products. So, uh, you know, it, it, not really, I, I wouldn't say there are any legal aspects here. It's okay. you own the IP, so we work, uh, we, we create these models for, for you. So it's uh, as long as this is your brand or this is something you can sell, that's, uh, I, I don't think there are any legal aspects. Yeah, I would imagine if there's any copyright infringement, it would still sit with the designer if there were an issue. Yeah, yeah, of course. So if you have the right to sell it, I mean, I, you would probably have the right to photo shoot it or create visuals for that to sell more, so. Right, and John Amiri asks, can we get an estimate of costs involved um, to give that a little bit of a case study since uh, it could be different depending on the amount of products and things like that. What yeah. would be kind of an estimate cost for getting started with you? Yeah, so it depends on the model. As I said, the main thing is complexity. And uh, so the models typically are priced between $30 to $200 per model. So if you are selling something very simple uh, from 3D standpoint, not, not from design standpoint, but from 3D standpoint, it can be really, uh, you know, uh, $30 or even less if you're selling something like rugs or something like that. But uh, if you are selling complex, highly intricate products, it could be around $200 per model. And uh, then the, uh, the uh, pricing of the viewer uh, depends very much on the number of views that you are getting. So the very first plan is for free. And then, you know, it depends if, how popular is your website and how many times we would load this, uh, this viewer uh, would be loaded. So that depends on the... On so if um, the products that I, like say I had you um, render a series of blankets that I design and that's on my website, if I get a lot of traffic to that and people are viewing my products, um, I'll be charged additionally for that link back to your supporting um, product page? Yeah, so this would be, um, you know, it, it, there are different plans. So some, it can cost, you know, $100 per month, depends on the, on the number of views. But typically we see that, um, it, you know, it, it depends, right? If, if, you're, if uh, the website is in the top 10, it's of course, uh, it's quite costly, but um, otherwise it's uh, very affordable. Got you. So if 
I uploaded those images to my own website and my own server was supporting those, would I still be charged every time there's traffic to that product from your side? Uh, so it's, um, if you are doing a still images, then no, there is, you know, there is no charge. If, uh, if it's an experience like this one on the right, uh, it, uh, we, we would have some kind of a plan that uh, gotcha. depends on the volume because this uh, depends on the server costs, right? Got you. Well, in that case, Kat asked, Kat Yeager asked again, um, the pricing is a little unclear, which makes sense because it kind of depends on your, on what your client need is, but is yeah. um, our price structures kind of outlined on your website? Is there something we can look at to get a little bit more of a picture of how much this will cost us? Yes, absolutely. So I think that um, you can look on enterprise.cgtrader.com. Uh, there is the pricing page and um, the, the, on, the, on the modeling side, I, I kind of uh, provided the range as a one, one time cost, right? So you pay once for the production of the model. And then uh, this depends on the complexity. Got you. And another question is, do you create working prototypes for mass manufacturing? I think what they mean, like, can I send that model to China or wherever I'm having it manufactured and they can work off of that? So these models that we create, they are for uh, visualization purposes. They are not engineering models. They look very, very real, but they are not, you know, something like SolidWorks or something like that. It's, they are optimized for viewing in different environments. So typically you wouldn't manufacture based off that model, but uh, I mean, you can provide it as a visual aid for your partners to manufacture it. Right. It's always nice to be able to provide how something looks yeah. and feels, even if it's not a technical spec. The more you can send manufacturing, the better off, I find. Um, Beverly asks, can the model simply be emailed to a specific client instead of publishing on a website? Uh, yes, of course. So you, can, uh, not you don't necessarily need to publish it on the website. You can download all the materials from CG Trader Arsenal once they are done. So... I mean, you can download the source files, the images, and uh, anything you like. And Rose Hitmeyer asks, can a designer send you AutoCAD plans for furniture to be rendered? Yes, sometimes we have that um, as well. Not, not uh, the usual solution, but uh, we can look at it and see if we can create. Fantastic. Um, and I had a couple questions written down for you too. Um, how, this is an interesting thing, and I don't know if everybody quite knows this. Um, how accurate is, say, the augmented reality piece? If I project a stool in my environment, how accurate is that? Is it? Can I really trust that that stool fits between those chairs when I look through my phone? Yes. Uh, so actually, it's it's very accurate. It's a uh, real world scale. Uh, Apple and Google support this, so they have built the software that understands the environment. So they are able to understand, you know, how big the room is, how, what are the distances between objects, and then they place it in real world scale. So that's, that's what's so compelling about this so that you can actually see it, uh, how it would really, really look uh, if you were to buy the product. That's crazy and a little creepy, but I'm really glad that that's a feature that we can rely on. Um, and what is the average investment to get started? I think we kind of touched on this a little bit here, but as Kat had mentioned, the pricing is a little unclear. So on the average, um, how much, how much would it, would I, should I kind of think about here to get started with you? So if you, um, so it very much depends on the number of products that you are doing. So if you do less than 10 products, it's free. Uh, the, the arsenal plans are free and the cost per model would be between uh, 30 to $200. So, you know, if, you, if you're talking about 10 products, it could be somewhere between 300 and $2,000 to get started. Got you. That's not bad considering how much a photo shoot costs plus the time and people mm -hmm. involved that is so hard to coordinate right now in these times. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mark Rosenhaus asks, can you change colors of objects? Yeah, so we, we create variations and then you can uh, offer this, uh, you know, provide this to the customer, um, different, different options. That's awesome. So you can probably also do color like patterns and maybe even change features like the legs of a couch. Or yes, yes. Metal on That's very common in, 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 in 
furnishings interior it's uh the people often manufacture you know different variations of the product so we produce all of them and then you have on your website the different options that the customer can change that's really amazing i love this like just from my standpoint i can see um, being able to design more quickly and rapidly and testing products and interest on my website um, and then really scaling those ideas from best sellers and moving into new products variations of that. So yeah. this has been super helpful. I'm already imagining how we can work together. We have about 10 minutes left and I want to be sure everybody gets their questions answered. Feel free to drop again your questions in the chat if you had a little bit more of a story to ask. You can unmute yourselves, raise your hand and unmute yourselves and ask. Um, Beverly, can um, Beverly has a question. Can you please show the last screen of your presentation, which had an offer for getting started? Oh, of course. Sorry. Yes. And can you elaborate on that a little bit more? I see um, it's amazing that you're offering 3D models to get started and a growth plan. What is the growth plan? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so growth plan is basically hosting the models. On, on our web on the and providing these interactive experiences it's uh, optimized for quite large websites so I think it's a hundred you can load up to hundred thousand times per month these uh, 3d models so if you're doing three three 3d models most likely it's uh, it's uh, you know it's it not necessarily will be fully used but in any case as I mentioned uh, if you are doing uh, uh, less than 10 models you can use for free forever. It's a, it's a free plan for less than 10 models anyway. And if you have a lot of um, more 3D models, then you can use the CG3 Arsenal growth plan for three months for free. Fantastic. Mark Rosenhaus also asked, can you change the pillow sitting on the couch without changing the couch? Yes, yes, but of course, you know, we need to, we need to do it in the 3D software, so it's kind of it's a variation of the product. We call this a variation of the product. It needs to be created. Gotcha. So like if you had the couch and, and like a series of pillows, the customer could potentially view that couch and then start to toss a couple different pillows on there themselves to decide it's, what to um, You can load different images with different uh, pillows. It wouldn't be quite as interactive yet, but uh, we are working on it. Got you. Okay, so it would be a series of images that they can flip through to see what that combination might look like. Yeah, exactly. Got you. And Leanne asks, do we have to sign up for a program based on time or just for specific items? So it, um, it, it's uh, based on the, on the models, how many models you're looking for. So that's the first step. So it's based on how many products you yes. want to. Got you. Awesome. Any other questions? We still have a few minutes here. Um, feel free to drop some more in the chat. And I thank you so much, Dahlia and Agneta, for presenting this information to us. Um, I'm seeing more and more AR, VR information coming out in the press and, um, and in media. It's definitely a technology that's rapidly developing in our world and a customer expectation very soon. So the sooner you can get into this and um, in this time of development where we're all kind of stepping back and developing our businesses and looking at what's important, this is going to be a really leverageable technology that consumers are going to love. So if you can become a first mover in this area, it's definitely an amazing opportunity at low cost to get started and really scale that way. Thank you very much, Gareta. We are very excited to be here as well. Awesome. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Dahlia, do you have any last thoughts to share with our community? Yeah, so I, I would like, you know, if you haven't tried out this technology, it would be happy to, to help you to do that. So it's, it's free for the first three models. So just take advantage of this offer and uh, try it out and see how it works for your brands and for your products. So we are very, very excited to, to be here. And we think that, you know, very happy to help if, if you if you feel that this could be helpful for your brand. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you sharing this with us today. And and um, I hope that we'll be in touch again as things develop in this technology. All right. Thank you very much.